Hello everybody, my name is Dratnos and welcome to This Week in Mythic Plus for the week that started on the 18th of February, which is a couple days ago now uh, in North America, and then 19th in Europe. Sorry we're a couple days late on this one, I wanted to get it out uh, rather than not release anything at all, and in future weeks they'll be out on reset days. Uh, so this week's affixes are Fortified, Bursting, Volcanic, and The Awakened is on the A pattern. For those of you who don't know, uh, Awakened is on a every 14 days, so every two weeks, Awaken switches from one pattern to the other. There are only two possible patterns, and not all that much actually changes between the two of them. So it's not a big deal, the distinction between those two, but uh, eventually it might start to matter, particularly if you start deciding to pull Awakened mini-bosses with end bosses. That can, that can be where that starts to really matter. For now, though, uh, most of the routes I'm going to show you for this week are going to involve not doing that kind of stuff, although it is a good strategy to save time as you start getting more and more familiar with those bosses. Okay, so let's start out with Taldazar, as always. Uh, and my routes here, you can find them on Raider.io as well. They're from the weekly route that you can find on that site as well, and you can import them if you want. Apparently, the portal placement display has been a little bit strange on the imports. I'll try and work that out for next week uh, and figure out a way to make sure that you're getting these portals with your imports as well. But uh, you can see here where the portals are supposed to go. So uh, the strategy I've suggested for this, Ataldzar are actually a pretty rough Awakened dungeon. It's one of the ones where Awakened is at its worst. Um, you have you have these obelisks on both the left and the right sides, and typically groups would usually go down only one of these two paths each dungeon, uh, so it kind of forces you to do both. And then you get an obelisk in the middle pack, which sometimes was pulled, but often was not, and one next to this double honor guard pack, which is a pretty rough pack to fight. So all in all, you're looking at needing to execute multiple, like, vanish skips or... Uh, fighting these things with the end bosses, which you can do, right? You can fight Blood of the Corruptor with the end boss. That's, that is something that's possible, but then you're adding difficulty to uh, an already tricky boss uh, at the end of this dungeon. So, I don't know. It, it, this one is one that I think was one of the easiest dungeons on the rotation before and is now one of the hardest ones because of where all these Awakened portals are. It's not like it's impossible uh, and a good coordinated group, especially one that has a lot of good ways. Like, if, you, if, you're, if you're comfortable not pulling this pack and doing this obelisk, uh, and if you're comfortable, you know, not uh, pulling this pack and doing this obelisk, uh, then it can it can work out fairly well for you. Although even then, there's still it's still inefficient. Like even if you can solve the difficulty problems of these these pulls, there's still a lot of inefficiency based on where they they all the portals are placed. So my route, I'm I'm suggesting you start off by going left. Uh, you can pull all six of these and use bloodlust if you want, or you can just go three and then three. If you're going to do that, you might want to save bloodlust for this pull then, uh, and then you just use this portal to get over to here. Uh, kill all this stuff, hop on over here, hop down to Razan, come back up, uh, and then I've got some portals going to some different places here. I'm suggesting to kill this pack. It's a really rough pack, so if you can skip it, that is ideal, but uh, it's pretty tough. Like, if you're not in a coordinated group, your people are likely to get in combat with this nonsense, uh, you know, with this thing casting on them or whatever, so uh, you have to have somebody who really knows how to, like, survive, pull this to the side, and drop combat, uh, and everybody else using this fire quickly, so... Uh, it's a little bit harder to skip than this one, which I am suggesting to skip later on uh, by just like running down this way or, or back this way or up this way. I guess down this way is not going to work because there's enemies here, but you know, grab them, run this way, uh, and then the rest of your group uses the spire. And then you can actually take this spire to Yasma and avoid having to, to dodge spiders, which does help a little bit, but uh, it doesn't make up for the fact that there's just all these awful skips. Anyways, this is the best I got. Uh, honestly, pulling this pack is probably a better strategy in a high key than pulling this pack, um, but skipping this pack is easier than skipping this pack. So that's why I've included this one in the route and not the other one. Uh, but you can do either or both depending on what level key you're doing and how coordinated your group is. All right, up next is Freehold. It's a good week for Freehold. There are a number of things that we like going on here. Uh, Eudora is on our side, so this fight is way easier than it would be if she were against us. It's fortified, so that doesn't really matter too much uh, if you're like pushing high keys, but it's still nice. And the Awakened plan for this dungeon actually works out fairly well. You get this skip here, and then what I like doing is pulling the spider here, Void Weaver Malthier, with the last boss. It does add some interrupts, but there's really not too much going on in the first, like, 40% of Harlan Sweet's boss fight. Uh, so I like fighting this, this mini boss with him, if you can. Uh, and what that lets you do is it lets you just skip all the way to Harlan with the spire here. You just drag this guy, uh, which you might you kind of want to kite anyways. Like, a lot of tanks get trucked by this thing. Uh, so it's kind of easier to kite this thing anyways. You just drag him all the way up here. And then after you finish killing Harlan, you can pick up the rest of your count by just jumping down and killing these. And even these if you've missed more count. Uh, and they'll just die when the Ravager finishes the Painful Motivation cast, as long as the key is a high enough level. Uh, this, <laughs> this is an interesting mechanic where in a low key, this won't actually kill stuff. 
but in a very in a, in a key of like 15 or higher this will kill almost everything in a tick or two uh because it's it double scales with key level anyways uh freehold good dungeon for this week the addition of awakened to king's rest has also been pretty good you get these two portals here uh, and what most groups will end up doing is they'll set one up near the middle of the bridge and then come back and grab the other one and bring it into this boss room. And that lets you basically skip whatever combination of enemies on the bridge you want. I've opted to skip almost everything on the bridge, basically. So, well, not almost everything, but the, the five pack uh, and this pack here. You can skip even more if you want to pull this thing. Uh, although, you know, th this thing's not super efficient either. So yeah, up to you. That's, that's totally fine as well. You could cut like this brute uh, if you wanted to skip this and that could work out just fine for you. Uh, other than that, things to remember this week, Bursting will be applied by these minions Azul dying, so be careful of that. Uh, one strategy that a lot of groups use is if they have a rogue, uh, the rogue can like Cloak of Shadows and get these minions as they spawn over here, and everybody else can avoid getting Bursting stacks by standing right up next to the gong. Uh, that'll be, that'll max range it, but it's, it's very tight, you have to be like all the way back up against the gong. Uh, so that is something you can do for this one, and yeah, just be careful of the 8 Bursting stacks if you're gonna Arcane Torrent or Mass Dispel these ones. All right, so Shrine of the Storm is a dungeon where Awakened adds a lot of possibilities, but you have to get a lot of count uh, to finish in this dungeon. So uh, you get to pick what mobs to skip, but one thing that you might want to be careful of is skipping too much early on and then being forced to like pull everything from this point onwards because you're low on count. Uh, that's something to be careful of. I instead prefer to fight the stuff at the beginning of the dungeon. Uh, so the only stuff I'm skipping is like this Guardian Elemental because you, so basically you'll like you pull this pack, go back to the portal, and then use it to skip the Guardian Elemental. Uh, is, is how I'm envisioning that looking. And I'm, I'm skipping like some of this stuff because uh, this living current is pretty annoying. But other than that, I'm pulling pretty much everything near the start of the dungeon. I'm pulling all the stuff here. And then I'm going to use this spire to pull to skip all of this nonsense because I, I don't like fighting these things. Uh, you basically have to fight this pack, but then you can skip all of these, which are also fairly lethal. Th this pack is better than this pack. So if you need to pull one bridge pack, you want to pull the one on the left. Uh, of, as you're looking down the bridge because that one only has the one caster rather than the three casters and the casters are a little bit more deadly than the cultists uh, and then yeah you can go into here and uh, doing these enemies with the last boss is pretty smart if, if you can while you have a, a healer empowered with the buff so if you're in a group that's comfortable doing that that'll save you some time if not though you can fight them before pulling the boss uh, to make it a little bit safer instead awakened in siege of basically again lets you choose what you want to skip uh, some options for good things to skip are like this pack is one you can skip. I choose not to, but you can. Uh, or you can skip a little bit of stuff near the beginning. Like you could skip this pack using this spire if you wanted to. Again, I'm not about that. I'd rather pull all the beginning of the dungeon and then skip almost all of this stuff uh, here. The, this, you know, monkey, bilge rat, buccaneer, quarter. Uh, I, I think that that's, a, that's the mo more kind of dangerous place. If you're playing in a really high level group, what you may want to do instead is keep this spotter alive here and use it to kill all this stuff, to go ahead and back kill all these things. So you can still use this portal to get to the spotter quickly, and then you'll get your count by pulling backwards and using the spotter to uh, to murder all these, you know, bilge rat pirates over here. If you're going to do that, then you can skip all of this other stuff, basically everything you can near the start of the dungeon too. Uh, so that's more efficient than what I'm doing, but it is more difficult too. Temple of Sithralis, if Ataldas, okay, if Ataldazar is the dungeon that got the hardest with Awakened, I'd say Temple is probably one of the ones that benefited the most from Awakened. I think that it's one uh, where we really, it's really nice to just have like this obelisk here giving you a great skip that you always wanted to do and just sometimes you didn't have a group uh, that could skip this part. This Spire here letting you skip this part, great as well. Uh, one thing to watch out for here is this Spire, don't activate it immediately. Wait until after you kill Galv, then go activate it and you can use it to skip this lightning se uh, section and bring the portal into this area. Uh, and then, yeah, you can use this to get down to the last boss. So Awakened, basically perfect for Templus of Thralis. Uh, they are all in like time-saving locations. It's pretty great. And this is a pretty great week for Temple as well. Fortified is, is a good affix there. Bursting, Volcanic, neither of those too bad. Um, so really, really great dungeon just for this for this season and for this week. Mother Load, you basically get one obelisk per, like for each of the four areas where there's trash, you get an obelisk and you can use it to skip as much or as little of that area as possible. The standard route kind of involves pulling a lot in the first quarter, pulling a bit in the second quarter, and then skipping everything else for the rest of the dungeon, uh, killing just enough trash to get you to the obelisk, and then using that obelisk to skip to the end of the dungeon. If you want, it's possible to, you know, you could you could even skip this obelisk, like you could just do a death skip from here to here, and then fight the Blood of the Corruptor with Mogul Razdunk, like that's that's possible. A little bit of a scary mini boss to fight with Mogul Razdunk, but it's not uh, impossible to do that. Uh, or similarly, like you could you could skip you know with a shroud instead and fight Voidweaver Malthier with Mogul Razdunk. That also is totally fine. 
Uh, that's the spider. Those are options, but I don't know. These are just so useful skips that uh, even if you have a rogue, it really doesn't save you too much time to avoid pulling these obelisks on time. It'll save you a little bit of time. And if you don't have a rogue, it's really nice to just have this shroud for free. So uh, another dungeon I'd say that got improved with Awakened. Still, I think the best strategy is to pick up almost all your count that you can near the start of the dungeon, especially by letting Peacekeepers pilot. Almost every high-level group will kill a bunch of Peacekeepers and will never, will basically never interrupt any mech jockeys from piloting them. That's because Peacekeepers give 12 count and they have, you know, 3 million base health. Whereas most enemies in here that, that give 4 count have like 2 million base health, right? Uh, so this thing has less than double the base health of the other stuff and it gives 3 times as much count. So it's, it's way more efficient in terms of health to, to enemy forces. Uh, and that's why almost every group will pull a bunch of these, even though they're pretty scary. Uh, because it just means you have to do fewer pulls throughout the dungeon. All right, so the Underrod is not as bad as a Taldazar, but there are some awkward portals in here. Uh, a Taldazar and the Underrod, I'd say, are the two that got worse with Awakened rather than better. Although I think that it's actually fine here in the Underrod because this was a fairly easy dungeon before, uh, and this restriction is actually kind of interesting at the end of the dungeon in a high-level group. In a low-level group, you're basically kind of obligated to kill both these things because you don't really want to fight either of them with the last boss. In a high-level group, you actually can fight even this guy. This one's one that's usually pretty scary to fight with an end boss, but... I think it's possible against the Underrod end boss, so you could you could fight either of these enemies with the last boss. And if that's true, then it, start, it stops being really annoying to activate both of these spires. In most groups, though, you're going to want to activate both these spires. And one thing you want to be careful of is you like a, a thing that I see a lot of groups do is they'll go and activate this portal, and then they'll take it over to this portal. They'll pop out, and then they'll fight a Defiler, a Horror, and a Corruptor all at once. They'll fight all three of these enemies all at once. That can be pretty scary. Uh, it's not impossible, but it's very likely that people will start to die as they have to dodge this thing, and you're handling two separate, highly interrupt-intensive enemies. Uh, so I would I would recommend, instead, you take this portal to about here, and then you can start cleaning up going down this way, and that lets you pull this Corruptor in, in advance, right? Uh, and then you can come into just these two enemies, uh, and it's a lot less hectic, a lot more manageable. And you kind of need the count anyways. Uh, you know, you can skip these and pull this Skeleton Pack instead. That's a little bit more efficient. Uh, but it does mean that you'll have a little bit less open space as you move into this area. So uh, that's the trade-off there. Toldegore is basically, you use the portals to skip stuff that you'd want to skip anyways. It works out pretty nicely. Uh, you do have to be careful because you're going to want to make sure still that you get your buffs if you can. If you have a class who can pick up buffs. So, you know, still pulling this stuff and then having somebody open the cages, if you have somebody who can do that, uh, is going to help you out later in the dungeon. It's worth taking a little bit of time uh, to get those buffs. They're very strong. Uh, but other than that, you just kind of use them to skip stuff that you would skip anyway. Uh, and that works out really nicely. This portal at the end here, the Brutal Spire, uh, you basically, you, you're rarely going to want to skip these things because they're pretty pretty safe to just cannon them down. Uh, but depending on how you want to use your cannons, how your group uses cannons, you may end up not using your cannons against these. Even still, I'd recommend pulling them rather than skipping them. But if you find that you've pulled too much in the rest of the dungeon and you get to here with like 90% count already, then you can use this one to do a skip. Theoretically, you could even leave this for after you do this boss and then use it to skip this stuff. Uh, but again, that's unlikely to be... It's unlikely that a you know a, a top-level, fully optimized route will ever skip enemies in this area simply because they can just be killed with cannons. And that is so much more effective than killing any other trash with your actual player abilities in a high enough key. Uh, but in a low key, you may actually find this, this area to be more annoying than you know just going slowly and killing everything through the rest of the dungeon because you know these things have the possibility of accidentally pulling and you want to mitigate that chance so if you make that decision that's that's fair enough waycrest is one where awakened is also not too helpful it's not too bad but it's not too helpful uh the one thing to be aware of is that it's pretty easy to miss some of these obelisks so you'll, you'll basically never miss this first one or this one here in the middle of the courtyard but depending on where you're planning to go it's possible you'll entirely miss the entropic spire which is bad you don't want to fight this with the end boss usually this is the fear guy uh, it's not impossible but again not not something I'd super recommend. And in the cellar, even if you like, even if you're coming down with the, you're coming through this way, uh, it's often easy to miss this curse spire here as well. So uh, double check, make sure that you've actually handled this spire if you want to. I mean, it you know it is possible to fight uh, the spider with the last boss. That is, that's definitely doable. On the other awakened pattern, on the B pattern, uh, what is actually what is this one on the B pattern? On the B pattern is also the spider. So yeah, it's not it's it's not actually impossible to fight this thing. With the end boss, it's one of the easier enemies to do that with. The end boss does have a kick of his own that is required, but many groups will have enough kicks for that. Uh, or just letting a couple of these casts go through is fine, but still. Uh, I'd advise most groups end up making sure you kill off this uh, this awakened enemy. 
All right, we're on to the new dungeon here, Mechagon Junkyard. Uh, Junkyard is a little bit of an interesting one. First off, the hard mode enemy, the one that adds those extra bot encounters to the different fights, flies over a different boss for each region. So sometimes my routes are going to suggest going to a boss over which there is a patrolling, you know, enemy for your region, like if you're in Europe, perhaps, or in North America. Uh, it's possible that in one of those two regions in any given week, I'll have a route that accidentally tells you to go to that boss, so be careful of that. Obviously, don't do not do that. Instead, go, go in the other direction. Uh, here's the strategy, though, that I like for kind of just in general for Junkyard. Uh, you head right. You can use this spire to skip into the first boss room here, King Gob Gobamac. Uh, and then you come around here, pull some trash this way. Uh, you do basically all the trash in Trixie and Nano's room. Then you kill that boss. And then you can portal over here. And I like portaling. You can. There are some groups that like portaling over here and starting clearing from over here. I like portaling over here, though, and picking up these bots if you need them, uh, getting quick access to them, and then kind of looping back around and finishing off this trash last and then doing Gunker. Uh, and then from there, you can use the portal to get back over here and then come down this way, uh, kill some trash here, go get access to this portal, use that to get over here, get a little bit farther than this portal, and then you can kill off some trash here and then portal into the last boss and skip as much of this stuff as you can. It, there are ways to skip more of the trash in here by like a mage running running away and invising or you know rogue running by and vanishing or there's a, there's there are there are ways that you can avoid having to pull even these because this trash is not ideal I'd say I'd say it's better to pull other stuff than this if you can but uh, in most groups you're it's it's going to be easiest to just pull them because they're uh, you know next to that next to that spire and you want to get access to the spire without having to do something fancy. So I'd say this is a good kind of default for this dungeon. And finally, Workshop. Workshop is a dungeon that basically doesn't have any routing creativity available. It's a straight line. You know, you, you pull you pull everything in a straight line. You can decide which trash you want to skip. Almost everybody will do the same thing, which is skip this stuff. Uh, one thing that you might not be aware of is if you've pulled all the other trash in the rest of the dungeon, you don't even need to pull these two patrolling defense bots. I see a lot of groups pull these. Like they, they start fighting these and the patrol is close and they just grab these two things. That makes that pull a lot harder for no reason. If you've done all the other trash, you will have full count, uh, and you don't need to pull these two patrolling ones either. You just do these three, uh, and then this thing will give you your last four count that you need uh, to get over the finish line. This week, also a pretty good week for Workshop. Fortified is it's it's kind of a toss-up whether... I would say Fortified is better here than, than Tyrannical, but uh, there are some trash mobs that do get pretty rough with Fortified. You're going to want to use your Bloodlust on this pull here, the, uh, the three defense bots. That can be really, really punishing. And another pull that can really suck is this pull. There are some times, some of the overlaps here on the, you know, the shield generators, like the second squirrel, the second anti-personnel squirrel is going to explode like 0.1 seconds after a shield disappears. So don't get baited into thinking that's safe uh, because it's not. And that wipes groups pretty often. So uh, that's something that happens quite a lot. Be careful of that. Uh, in general, just making sure those squirrels don't actually explode, even if you think you're safe in a shield, is a safe way to play it. Although if the shield spawned very recently, then it will probably last long enough. Uh, again, make sure make sure your group is not killing those shield generators. You you want to stand in those for the defensive value uh, rather than you know killing them. That's uh, the, kind of the mythic zero default from last season, back before this was M plus, was just killing the shield generators because the trash didn't matter and it was easy. Uh, and that is not the way in a high mythic plus setting. Anyways, uh, that has been my routes for this week. Hope that helps. Uh, if you liked it, remember to like and subscribe. Oh no, I'm under attack. Wow, I'm surprised I wasn't under attack for so long here. Uh, what do I want to do here? Probably this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was really lucky. Um, <laughs> anyway, like and subscribe. Um, check out my Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash ratnos, where I will soon be attacking this raid. Uh, and thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. We got him.